Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kyle, the Lawn Mentor here. And today we are going to look at replacing one of my sprinklers from an above ground sprinkler to an in ground sprinkler, but still using a hose spigot. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. So if you guys have checked out my video about what I use to water my lawn, you'll know about this hose timer right here. It's a Melnor hose timer. I have three hoses hooked up to this right now that uh, basically covers my main stage section of my lawn and it's on a timer to basically water the lawn on a schedule. So this is hooked directly up to the hose spigot off my house and then I have separate hoses that lead to above ground sprinklers to water my lawn. So you can check out that video for more information on which sprinklers I do use to water my lawn but the one that we're going to replace today looks like this. So this is the sprinkler that we're gonna be replacing today. It's a gear driven sprinkler that is on a lawn spike and hooks up to a hose. And so I run a hose to this sprinkler and it sits above ground in the corner of my lawn. And I hit it with my lawnmower all the time. I'm really surprised that nobody has come by and hit it with a car when pulling into my driveway because it's right next to my driveway. And it's just ugly and in the way. So I would like to replace it with an in-ground sprinkler. You can see the hose timer is right coming off the spigot. And then we have this green hose that runs this way and is kind of snaked behind the garden bed. And until I remove that garden bed and pull it out to this live edge, this hose just runs along the cement here and then carries along this edge of this walkway to the sprinkler at the corner. Number one, this sprinkler sticks up and is just plain old ugly. So we're going to try to replace this sprinkler with an in-ground rotor that will be in roughly the same location. So I went ahead and bought a few materials from the store to try to do this. So we'll go over those, but in general, what we're gonna try to do is remove all of the mulch from that mulch bed that runs along the side of the walk. So we're gonna try to remove all of that mulch that is alongside the walkway where the hose is currently sitting on top of. And we will dig down as far down as we need to to uh, get our sprinkler pipe run through there. And until I get rid of this stone flower bed, the hose is just gonna have to lay over the top of that, but I'll eventually be able to tuck it into that flower bed too so that you won't even see this hose. Then we just have to bury the sprinkler and we can adjust it as appropriate. And then we should have one of our sprinkler zones as an underground sprinkler. So let's check out the parts and materials that we have ready for this job. By the way, I got some stickers on the way. So if you're interested in buying one of my stickers, let me know down in the comments. We can get in touch and we'll figure something out once I've got some stickers in stock and ready for you guys to buy. First things first, we need a sprinkler. So I picked all of this stuff up at my local Home Depot. I think I spent about $50 total to get all the parts required for this. So if you already have a hose timer, it should be you know around that same price if you're just doing one sprinkler. I went ahead and picked up this Rainbird rotor sprinkler. So it's an in-ground sprinkler that uh, obviously pops up when the sprinkler is on and then we'll rotate back and forth. So in terms of the type of spray it's putting out, it's very similar to the existing sprinkler that I have. And on top of that, uh, I hit it with my lawnmower all the time. My weed whacker all the time, it's hard to weed whack around that. It just looks like crap. I would way rather have something like this that's buried in the ground and you won't really see it, especially right next to a walkway. So this should be a much better option. The model on this, is a 32SA. It has an inlet that's threaded uh, for half an inch. And so I also picked up a half inch fitting for it, which will screw into the bottom of this and then be able to be attached to the pipe. Eventually we'll have tape on here and everything and we will just screw this into the bottom and then this will sit in the ground. That leads us to our next thing, which is how do we get the water to this? So for that, I went ahead and picked up some sprinkler pipe or it's really just plastic, kind of semi-flexible, I guess, pipe and also a fitting. So 
This fitting is a compression fitting and I can't even get it off. Three quarter inch swivel adapter it's called, but basically it's a compression fitting with a female three quarter end to it so that you can hook this up to one of your spigots or uh, one of the kind of ports on my timer. We'll get this end hooked up to the timer and then this pipe will be buried underground and it will attach to this fitting, which will be in the bottom of this sprinkler and we should be in business. It should be relatively easy. One other thing I did buy was some thread tape for these threads, which are gonna go into the bottom of the sprinkler rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that wrapped up around here and this attached, this fitting attached to the sprinkler so that we don't have to do that when we're out in the yard. So now that I got my thread tape on there, I can go ahead and screw this in and we should have a watertight seal. And I went ahead and took the sticker off of here too so that when the pipe attaches there, that it's a clean connection. Now the next step would be to grab a couple tools and go get rid of those wood chips out of the way so that we have a good surface to get this sprinkler installed in. So let's do it. So in terms of tools for the job, what I have is basically two kinds of rakes just a general like plastic rake for getting stuff out of the way and then a metal bow rake, which will probably do most of the work to get all of the wood chips and stuff out of there. Then I got two kinds of shovels, obviously for digging and burying the lime. These plants that are in this bed don't do very well and only one of them is flowered. So I don't really care about getting rid of them or destroying them. They're just gonna go bye-bye and we're just gonna have to figure something out later. The mulch is also, it's worn out, the color's faded and uh, it just looks like crap. So I'm going to continue this live edge bed along the pathway right there. So I've got this uh, 10 cubic foot dump cart also to collect all the old wood chips and figure out what we're going to do them after. Let's go ahead and get this stuff pulled back, get this out of here, expose the soil so we can bury the line. sun's hot holy crap before i get too far into this i want to make sure that the setup that i have is actually going to work and push water so so let's go grab our materials measure out how much pipe we need and see if we can actually get water to flow through it and uh, run the sprinkler before we start digging burying lines or anything like that i'm just going to take this and do like a dry fit it's actually more like a wet fit because we're actually going to run water through it anyway so i'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the sprinkler right next to the spigot and see if we can actually get water to come out of it and uh, make sure everything's going to work as planned okay so i've got this open port here on the uh, sprinkler timer so i'm going to go ahead and use that as my test and make sure that water will actually come out of here Crap. wow all right i'm going to borrow this because it's easier to get at okay got it hooked up to zone four so if i go ahead and hit manual switch to zone four just do a minute Water should come flying out of here. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the sprinkler rotor hooked up to this pipe and see if there's enough pressure to actually push the water out of the sprinkler. There she goes. Oh. Water pressure is good, which means once we get this in the ground, we should be in good shape. So I lied, there's one other tool that I bought for this job and it's for cutting that pipe. So I wanted to make sure that I got a really good clean cut. So I bought this nine in one plumber's tool, which has a blade on it. You can see there that should be good for cutting that pipe. So that way I get a clean cut. 
and it's not frazzled. And I bought the actual Rainbird uh, screwdriver looking thing to actually adjust the head. Probably could have gotten away with doing it with a screwdriver myself, but I figured if I have any future sprinkler projects, this will come in handy. So, so let's go cut the pipe to the length that we want. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra length on the pipe. So that way, uh, once I remove that garden bed wall, it's got some room to flex in terms of if I need to bring it in or push it out, you know. So the old hose that I was using is actually a 50 foot hose and this black coil of hose is 50 feet also. So it's just about a couple of feet off here. So I'm just gonna cut this off with a little room to spare just in case I make any screw ups and we'll go from there. That was super clean. Those tools got this blade on here. Like, that was worth it. That was super easy to do right there. All right, so I took a break to go on a walk with the wifey. It's a beautiful day today. I found a bunch of ants in this soil and wood chips, which I'm not surprised by, honestly, because these wood chips are shot. All the more reason to not cover this back up with this crappy mulch and to get some kind of uh, ant barrier down uh, and probably bring in some better soil because the soil that's here sucks. The people that had this house beforehand around all this landscaping had pea gravel down and the people who sold us this house just put mulch and dirt on top of pea gravel. So anytime I go to dig on my property I'm running into you know an inch of pea gravel which makes it very difficult so I'm throwing the landscaping lights out. Only one of them works. They were cheap Walmart landscaping lights, solar powered lights. So those are gonna go in the garbage. I might put some lighting there, more permanent, better lighting there in the future. But for now, those are going away. We've got the black pipe laid out at this point. So what I'm gonna do is uh, clean up, try to be clean as I go. I'm going to use my poly dump car to fill up with dirt. I'm gonna first dig the trench for the sprinkler line and put that soil in the dump cart. And then I'm going to bury the line and the sprinkler with that dirt so the poly cart's empty at that point. Then I'll probably get old wood chips out of here. So let's get to it. So we got our trench dug, our sprinkler line here hooked up to the first zone and it comes all the way over back here. It sneaks underneath this gutter extension right here and then it's gonna come down right into our trench. It should get the job done. Eventually, once I get this kind of rock wall out of here, um, the line will be able to lay down behind this flower bed here and then I'll sneak it around right next to where this uh, patio's at, kind of like underneath where the gutter's at. And it'll actually come out in front of this corner here. So I need to leave myself a little bit of extra length to make sure that uh, I can make that turn once I get rid of this landscape border. It'll stick out a little bit in this corner and it's kind of kind of like stupid draped over the landscape edging, this block here, but it's a black pipe. You won't be able to really see it from the road or anything. So temporary solution. So let's take the sprinkler down there and uh, get that kind of dry fitted. Make sure our trench is deep enough. Uh, cut off any excess hose that we need to cut off. And then uh, we can kind of settle the sprinkler in there and test it out. I just need to make sure that I have enough line to get to where I need to go. Just a uh, dummy tip, I guess, I'm an idiot. Don't let dirt get in here. So we've got our sprinkler pushed into the line here and it's pushed basically up past the threads hood and then this is just going to lay in here just like that. So then we can backfill behind this and kind of stand it up. 
So at least now this is out of the way. I'm not gonna smack it with my lawnmower and it's gonna stick up a little bit, but eventually this will get mulch over it. So you won't see the sticker or anything. I'm not really worried about it right now. I don't really care. Let's get this thing adjusted and then let's try to see if we can uh, do a test and make sure that this is gonna have water in it and not leak before it gets buried. I have never adjusted one of these before. I know there's an arrow right here, which is basically like where the nozzle is at, which is wrong. I need to point this way. So this seems to be an adjustment for how far it'll go. If I turn this to plus and I reset it, it'll actually go further. If I dial this down to minus and go to this like reset point, then it actually turns less. Oh, here it is. Simple to install. Find your fixed left edge. Rotate the entire rotor. So... I did the typical man thing and tried to do it without looking at the instructions first. And I think I might be causing myself some harm because of it. So, I figured out that the left edge of the sprinkler is fixed, meaning you can't adjust it. So when you are screwing the rotor into the uh, fitting on the bottom of it, you have to only screw it in enough such that um, your left edge is where it's supposed to be. So I had to actually back mine off, and I don't know if that's going to cause any leaking problems with like tearing the thread tape or anything like that, because I don't think you're supposed to back off with thread tape on there. But we're gonna try it. My left edge is like basically like in line with this uh, trench here. So you can see on top of the sprinkler, there's an arrow right there. And that's like how far it turns left. You can't adjust that. I can adjust how far it turns right this way, but I can't adjust how far it turns left apparently. So I need to put this in the ground such that it's uh, the left edge is exactly where it needs to be. Hey, it's not rocket science, but I still can't figure it out. Ugh. Okay, so I got my, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. So there's an arrow right on top of here and I got it moved all the way to the left. So I'm just gonna adjust that so that it's directly in line with where I need this to go, or at least really close and backfill this temporarily until we can do a leak-ish test. Hold the top of the head and twist this to plus to get it to go further. So that's too far. So I'm gonna dial back like a quarter turn. And that's still a little far. This is adjustable though, obviously I could do this afterwards, but I'd like to get it at least close so I'm not putting water in a bunch of places it doesn't need to go. We've got our right and left boundaries set. On top of here, there's a Phillips screw and that is to adjust the tip of the nozzle. There's a nozzle here with a screw that you can, or rather the tip here of the rotor, there's a screw that you can adjust to basically deflect the water. So it's a little hot, it needs to be turned down. So let's get a screwdriver and turn that down. So I'm gonna put this down quite a bit. I can always back it off later. Okay, so I think we're at the point now where we can safely do a test and see if this is gonna work. The throw looks good. Left edge needs to be adjusted a little bit, so I'm just gonna actually rotate the rotor. Okay, so it's working. Spraying. So it's covering this kind of corner of the lot right here. So it comes all the way over. It's a little too far, so it needs to be brought back some. So it goes all the way back towards the house. I like it. I'm going to uh, bury the line that's in the trench right now and then just deal with uh, what's immediately around the sprinkler to check for leaks and uh, get it firmly planted. And then um, we'll button it up and be good to go. So let's do it.
So right at the spot where the sprinkler line makes that turn around the walkway, I'm gonna use a couple landscape stakes that I have left over from putting this landscape edging in to kind of hold it in place because right at the corner here, it just, it's gonna stick out and I don't wanna chop it with my mower or anything like that. So just use that to kind of help guide it. All right, so now we've pretty much got the hose ran down the trench and we can do the real backfill to fill this in. This right here is the Rikers Island wood chip shovel. Contact John Perry if you want one. Okay guys, well, I think we're gonna leave it there. That's pretty much the install. From here on out, it's gonna be clean up. I'm um, sure the dirt that's left there is going to settle. You can remulch it, plant some flowers, whatever you would like to do. I'm going to get this old mulch out of here, probably back with the rest of the brush in my backyard. Obviously, I'm going to, I got to keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't leak. And I need to make sure that it's firmly planted in the ground. Got to check the sprinkler timer, the timer side too, to make sure that compression fitting thing is not leaking. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much how you do it. Thanks for watching. This was fun. Kudos to you irrigation guys who've done it by hand, by yourselves. Thanks for watching. Thank you to those who have subscribed. If you have not subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. Hit that like button if you like this video. If you found something helpful in this video, I'll see you next time.